My name is Edward, and I'm not going to lie to you. I've had a lot of scary things happen to me in my life. From car accidents, robberies, and even weather accidents, with so many things that have happened to me, you can't imagine what was the worst thing that could have happened to me. And when I tell you that the worst thing was meeting a man disguised as Mr. Clean, almost no one believes me, until I tell them the story. It all happened on a completely normal day when I didn't expect anything to happen to me. It was my day off from work and I had decided to stay home and clean the house. I realized that I was missing some air freshener and bleach, so I left my house and went to a cleaning store that was four blocks from my house. During that time I was new to the neighborhood, so I knew some stores by looking at them as I was walking around. Once I was approaching the place, I saw a man standing outside. It was someone dressed as Mr. Clean. I approached the store and walked in a bit confused. The man dressed as Mr. Clean. He was looking at me a lot. I admit that it was a very strange advertisement for the store since instead of attracting me to it, it made me quite uncomfortable. I finished buying my stuff and left and I could swear that the man followed me with his eyes until I left the block. That may have been the last time I interacted with the man that day, but it was just the beginning of what was to come. From that day on, I began to always see Mr. Clean outside the store. He was always standing there, staring at me, watching every move I made. Several times I thought about saying something to him, but to be honest, I was never the bravest person you could meet. And in that case, I don't think anyone could have blamed me. I mean, Mr. Clean was scary enough. Now imagine a man disguised as him, watching you every day you walk by his block. At first, I thought he was a boring man with a lousy, lousy sense of humor. But time went by and he kept watching me. I felt that he was taking whatever he was doing with me too far. And one day when he watched me again while I was with my little brother, I knew it had gone too far. The day after that happened, I got up first thing in the morning and went to the store to complain about the man disguised as Mr. Clean, but the response I received was not what I expected. A cashier at the place told me that the man didn't work there and he never did. The girl started telling me that the man just started showing up there, looking at all the people passing by. They tried several times to tell him to leave, but he never paid attention to any of the employees there. They even tried to call the police, but even though they told him to leave, he always ended up coming back, and since technically he wasn't doing anything wrong, there wasn't much more the police could do. At that moment, my blood ran cold and I slowly started to get dizzy. How long had he been watching me? Had he focused on me more than other people? Why was he doing it? The cashier asked if she had done something to me, but I didn't answer. I just walked out of the place, confused and out of my mind. From that day on, I stopped going that way. Every time I had to pass that way, I turned around and went in another direction. At first. This road was a little more unsafe and desolate, but still, it was much better than having to deal with a stalker staring at me, ready to do who knows what to me from one day to the next when I least expected it. Maybe my mistake was believing that the man disguised as Mr. Clean would stay alone on that block. The night it all got worse, the night I consider the worst night of my life, I was coming home from work. I was very tired and I wasn't even thinking about Mr. Clean. You can imagine my surprise when I found him standing in the middle of the night, a block away from my house, on the road he wasn't supposed to be on. Once I saw him, I quickly realized that not only had he already seen me, but he seemed to be waiting for me. He was just looking in my direction and seemed to recognize me from a distance. As soon as I recognized him, I turned around and tried to go around the block. I thought it had worked, but he was one step ahead of me. As soon as I dodged him, I ran back to my house and he was at the door looking at me. I tried to back up again and call the police, but as soon as I pulled the place out, the man activated for the first time and came running in my direction. I didn't know if it was the Mr. Clean costume or the fact that I had never seen him walk until that moment, but something about him was terrifying. This wasn't just a man in a costume running intimidatingly. This felt very wrong. It was the definition of danger. It felt like death itself was coming my way. I tried to react as fast as I could and without finishing the call to the police, I desperately ran away from the place. I had no direction, I just ran and ran trying to get to a place that was open or where people were walking, but it was useless. The man disguised as Mr. Clean was ridiculously fast and had impressive stamina and he caught up with me in a matter of a few blocks. Once he caught up to me, he lunged at me and tackled me to the ground. The man grabbed me by the hair and slammed my head into the pavement. The pain was indescribable, but you know what the worst part was? I was out of my mind. I was dizzy and out of it. I barely understood where I was, but I didn't know what was happening. Without saying a word to me, the man dragged me into an alley and threw me violently against some garbage cans. 
At that moment, I felt helpless. No one was passing by, and even if they did, they would probably pass by thinking that we were two drunks fighting. As if aware of his victory, Mr. Clean kept approaching me slowly, with the smile of his mask on his face. I asked him why he was doing this to me, what I had done to him to deserve such a punishment, and he again did not answer me. He walked a few more steps towards me until he suddenly stood still. Once he did this, he took off his costume mask, his whole face. It was completely ruined. He had several cuts all over his skin and even appeared to have different colored skin. It was at that moment that I realized that not all the skin on his face was his. The man opened his mouth and I understood why he wasn't talking. His tongue was missing. Do you know what was the scariest thing? At that moment, I understood what was happening. The man had an uncanny and intentional resemblance to Mr. Clean. He had cut off parts of his face to resemble him and had put on skin where it was missing. The man was obsessed with being just like Mr. Clean. As I made this discovery, I could see him pull something out of his pocket. It was a small scalpel. I didn't make much effort to understand what it meant. He wasn't here to make friends. He wanted my skin. Just as he had other people's skin on his face and possibly his body, he wanted mine too. I tried to gather my strength to ram him as hard as I could, but his physical condition was outstanding. Before I could attack him, he simply grabbed me with both arms and slammed my face into the ground again, but this time he did it harder. I was incapacitated. I could no longer fight. As he approached, I stared at the end of the alley, waiting for someone to help me. I kept waiting for a neighbor to see me and attack the man, for someone to call the police, or for the man to just stop and leave, but none of that was happening. He simply brought his scalpel close to my face, and in the most painful and humiliating moment of my life, he began to skin me. That day, my life should have come to an end, and I curse that it didn't. The man skinned most of my face, and as if that wasn't enough, he just left me almost bleeding to death on the ground and walked away. The next day, a garbage man found me and called an ambulance. There was no trace of either my skin or the man. No one could ever find the man, but even if they had, nothing would have changed. The damage was already done, my life had already been ruined. Nowadays, I try to live a normal life, but it is very difficult. There is not a day that goes by that I think my life ended that night. And you know what the worst thing is? It didn't do any good. The man is still loose in the streets, only somewhere else. My loss changed absolutely nothing. I was just another victim of that psychopath who will probably continue to do the same to other people with my skin on his face. My name is Laura, and I have a story to tell you. Maybe for you, it's just another horror story. But for me, it's something different. For me, it's a horrifying memory that I can't erase. It's a memory that makes me have nightmares every night. And I have realized how fragile life is. It is a memory of how in my most fragile moment, the moment when I technically didn't have enough to feed my children, a man offered to help me. A man who would turn out to be a psychopath and soon after would try to kill me in the most sadistic way I could have ever imagined. It all started several years ago. As I just told you, I had no job and two children to support. It was very difficult for a woman of my age, uneducated and foreign, to get a job. But I was doing everything possible to make it happen. And at that moment, in my moment of greatest desperation and fragility, he appeared. Matt was a bald man with a big smile. In the neighborhood, they called him Mr. Clean. Not only because he was intentionally identical to Mr. Clean's man, but also because he was obsessed with cleanliness. When he offered me a job cleaning his house, I knew it was going to be hard. But I wanted to work. And no matter how hard, I was happy that someone would give me a chance. 
First time I walked into his house, my jaw dropped. It was like walking into a surgical clinic, all white, bright, and shiny. There wasn't a speck of dust anywhere. I began to understand why he needed a full-time cleaner, because he had no social life outside of his sanitary home. Once he introduced me to his home, he also explained the rules. Every inch of his house had to be spotless, and he would not tolerate an ounce of dirt. In the beginning, he was a little permissive, but I could see on his face that he got very angry when I didn't finish cleaning something. As his days went by, his attitude began to change. I thought that with time, he would have more confidence in me, but the opposite happened. I could see him watching me constantly. At first, he would do it on the sly, but as the days went by, he became confident enough just to stand there while I worked, watching me with his arms crossed giving me psychotic looks when he thought something wasn't clean enough. Being a cleaner is stressful enough, but when you have someone breathing down your neck, waiting for you to find anything that isn't perfectly neat, it takes things to another level. Despite that, everything was going more or less fine. I was following his instructions to the letter, running the broom, mopping the floors, and cleaning the bathrooms until they sparkled. But then, things started to get weird. Matt started telling me that I wasn't cleaning enough, that there were bacteria everywhere, invisible to the naked eye, but waiting to attack. He told me, that bacteria could be in the air on my hands. Bacteria were everywhere. And my job was to tackle them until his house was completely sparkling clean. Even of that which was invisible. I tried to make the best of everything that was going on. To throw a lot of disinfectant around the house to always have perfectly washed hands, but inside, I knew this was the beginning of the end. And if I had known how this was going to end, I would have let it all end sooner. One day, Mr. Clean came into the house with an obsessive look on his face. He had tripped in the street and gotten himself dirty. Or at least, that's what I assumed when I saw his muddy arm. Without saying anything to me, he went straight to take a bath. But not before grabbing a garbage bag where I assume he would throw his clothes. Once he went to bathe, I kept cleaning the muddy marks, trying to impress him when he came back. So he would know that I was doing my job to the best of my ability. But when he came back, something completely different happened. He was clean, with new clothes, and without a mark of dirt, but with a bag in hand. He almost ran down the stairs and gave me the bag to throw. As I guessed, it was the bag with his clothes in it, which I immediately threw. Once I returned, I took off my slippers before going inside as usual. I was ready to continue cleaning, but I was met with an image that left me frozen in fear. Mr. Clean was standing in front of me, looking at me with a face that could scare anyone. His eyes were almost red. He was shaking nervously, like a rabid animal looking at me full of hate and ready to attack me. 
I didn't understand what was happening to him. Had I done something wrong? Had I messed up the house? Why was he looking at me so badly when I had just helped him? Sir, is something wrong? You're dirty! You're dirty too! You're full of bacteria! Bacteria everywhere! His words caught me unaware. I apologized and went to wash my hands as soon as possible, and he followed me, checking that they were perfectly clean. When I turned off the faucet, the man grabbed my hands and put them violently against the faucet, turning it back on and rubbing the soap all over my hands as if it were a rake. Sir, stop. You're hurting me. As soon as I told him that, he stepped back and quickly walked away from me. He didn't do it because he realized he was doing something wrong. His look was different. He was looking at me with hatred, but also fear. Sir? Without answering me, he jumped towards me and stood behind me, grabbing my neck from behind. You're dirty! All the germs! You'll never be completely clean! They come out of your mouth! What do you mean? Have you gone completely crazy? As he dragged me, the man carried me into the kitchen, where he threw me on the floor. You have breath! Do you know what breath is? It's food particles! All those particles go into my nose, into my body! You are infecting the whole house! I was shocked, not knowing what to say to him. At that moment, I realized that my life was in danger and that I had to leave as soon as possible. This man was not stable. At any moment, he could do something crazy. What I didn't know was that by that time, he had already thought of something crazy. I tried to stand up to leave, but at that moment, I could see that he grabbed something and was looking at it while looking at me. Mr. Clean had a bottle of bleach in his hands. If you want to keep working, you should be completely clean, even on the inside. No! What do you want to do with that? I quit. I don't want to work here anymore. Oh no, you can't quit. You're the best cleaner I've had in a long time. I understand you're scared, but you'll be cleaner and you'll thank me for it. That's when I understood that Mr. Clean would not understand the reason. His look was terrifying. He was even enjoying this. He was a psychopath who wanted to hurt me. He had simply lost his mind. He was completely out of his mind. He cornered me against the wall with the bottle of bleach menacingly close to my mouth. I could smell the pungent, acrid odor and fear came over me. No! Leave me alone! But he was determined. He grabbed me tightly and tried to force my mouth open to throw the bleach down my throat. As I dodged my mouth, I felt some of the bleach go down my throat, and the rest hit my face, splashing in my eyes. I felt the burning, the pain, the panic as I struggled to breathe. I couldn't believe this was happening. Faced with what was happening to me, I coughed desperately to get the taste of bleach out of my mouth, and that's when I found an opportunity. The moment I coughed, the man panicked and quickly ran away from me, frightened by all the bacteria I had released. I took this opportunity 
to run as fast as I could. Some bleach had gotten in my eyes, so I could see absolutely nothing, but I knew where the door was. With no resistance from the man, I managed to escape. Once I was outside, some neighbors recognized me and assisted me. Mr. Clean did not come out of his house. After that, I remember being taken to the hospital and having my stomach pumped. The process was horrendous, but it saved my life. As for Mr. Clean, I filed a report, and once he was in jail for attempted murder, he was released from prison almost immediately and ended up in a place that was more suited to his personality. A mental hospital. Today, I'm better off financially, and my children are older. They are the ones who take care of the cleaning. Since that day, I can't go near the bleach. The smell of it makes my blood pressure drop, and I relive the story over and over again.